not, not an easy game today. What did you make of just the way, um, first of all, Reggie Jackson came in the second half, uh, replacing Pat, and how you guys grinded it out? Yeah, I thought Reggie was great, you know, just like Pat Pat, just being a professional and, you know, staying ready. And um, he came in, I think he had 10 points in that third quarter, which was huge for us. Um, so um, hats off to Reggie for that. Um, I thought our bigs were phenomenal. I thought Serge and Zoo, you know, were really good, especially on the night tonight when we couldn't make shots. You know, we still had 26 assists, but, you know, we couldn't make the shots. We had a lot of open shots that we didn't make. And uh, I like how we just stayed with our defense, kept grinding, getting stops. And only having 10 turnovers a night as well. So um, on a night where you're not making shots, this was a good, you know, tough, ground out win for us. In that fourth quarter there, Paul was on the bench for the last, I think, 431. Was he, was that related to him being? I benched him. I benched him. <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. <laughs> no, he had, he had some tightness going into the game uh, tonight. So, he, you know, he got loose and he played, but he had some tightness going into the game. And then that last four and a half, five minutes, he just kind of say, you know, he felt tight. He tightened up again. So we just got him out to be cautious. Thank you. Thank you, Law. Well, you can go ahead. Hey, Ty, uh, congrats on the win. A um, couple of things real quick. Uh, can you elaborate on the tightness that Paul was dealing with? Um, just his hamstring. Okay. Um, and second, uh, Kawhi was great tonight. Um, not tonight. I mean, sun's still out. But he was great today. And um, he was really great two weeks ago in a similar spot in a matinee game where the rest of the team was relatively uneven. But especially in that third quarter two weeks ago, it was, it was Kawhi kind of carrying the team. Today, it was through different parts of the game. How how are you observing Kawhi getting ready for these particular time games? Um, as you know, now it's a seven game win streak, and he's played really well on both ends of this win streak. Um, well, he's been he's been phenomenal for us, and tonight, you know, we had to ride him. Like you said, um, outside of our two bigs with Zoo and and um, and Serge, you know, Kawhi had it going. So we kind of you know we played through him a lot, especially in that second half. And he, he created points for himself, and he created points for our team as well. So we had to ride him pretty hard just to, um, you know, just so we can continue to keep the lead and, and, and play through him a lot. So um, he did a good job with that. So I can see the headline now. Paul George benched. Benched. During win streak. No, his yeah, hamstring scared, tightened up. We all stopped Come breathing on, for a second. I appreciate the sense of humor, so we should add that to the board. Part of the streak, we have deeply discovered Ty Lue's sense of humor. Look at the field. What field do you like here? I love here. I love the 51% from the field. Three-point shooting is something that we've marveled at 44%, but points off turnover you know, that's been a huge key because not only is it getting to the basket or easy layups, you know, that attributes to that 44% from the three-point line. You're telling me that the three-point shootings like Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, is that what you're telling me? It's, it's like Santa Claus. All right, it's so we like... see it a couple times a year. I'm, I'm yep. pleased for that. All right, let's talk about points off turnover because 16, we have, well, we had 13 turnovers by OKC today. It led to 16 points for the Clippers. We, I, how do you game plan around that activity? Because clearly they're making that happen. Well, it's because of their defense. And, and with the Clippers, we've, we've talked about mostly their three-point shooting, but their defense, their defense is starting to click. And that is allowing them to get out in transition to make easy plays. And now if your shot is not falling, when you get these points off turnovers, if it's a live ball turnover, if it's a person trying to attack the bas basket, which we've seen in that, in that basically Fox vision, when a guy tried to stop the basketball, four, four teammates actually surround him, which got him out in transition to make plays. So it starts with the defense. When they start to put more pressure on their opponent, it allows them to get more points. Easy as that. All right, uh, we're going to go to break. we got some more stats to sh Showing up ready to go, said PG. And so the Clippers leaned on what works the most, the ball movement early in this one. Good to go. The Clippers led wire to wire. Of course, OKC not going anywhere, Corey Maggette. So the Clippers had to get back in it. And you know they're going to lean. Ka Kawhi just had a really good game tonight. 34 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists. I mean, he just really just took over the game. It was just like the Kawhi show. And I just love that he came ready to play. He wanted to continue the streak, seven games, 
a seven-game winning streak. But overall, it was a great team win right. because you needed other players to kind of help out, and they did a good job with that. Win streak now at seven, and Kawhi Leonard, to your point, there's really this on-off switch now. We see which quarter he feels he needs to put his foot on the gas. He had uh, 11 points in the first quarter. We saw him light up again in the fourth. Kawhi Leonard, our car. Max highlight of the game. Well, he had 21 points in that first half, and he was in attack mode right from the start. He continued to put pressure on their deep. As a mid-range player, it allows you to be at such a threat during the game that the, the opponent, they, they, they don't know exactly what to do. <laughs> and so Kawhi continued to put pressure on. They had a better defender in Lou Dort, but he couldn't he couldn't stop Kawhi tonight. Just a great effort. Uh, definitely cold from three, but as we watched some of the highlights there from Kawhi, I couldn't help but think about some of the assists we saw from him, and we'll get to Reggie Jackson in a little bit. But two of, of Kawhi's assists in the third, they were threes to Reggie Jackson. So Kawhi sharing the magic as well. Well, I love when he can pass the basketball, and he had the eight assists tonight, but more importantly, he had zero turnovers. Do you hear this? Zero turnovers. He's basically a point guard out there, and what Kawhi understands is that he continues to get his teammates involved. You need the entire team to be successful. So even though Kawhi got 34 points, Jeannie, he wanted to, to kind of kind of implement more of his play playmaking to his teammates where Reggie did a phenomenal job in this game coming in being assertive is something that they needed also saw Serge Ibaka again for a second game in a row where the Clippers really leaned on him early and said, let's find this on switch because we need you down and dirty uh, in, the, in the paint. Well, back-to-back -back games with 17 points, but back-to-back -back games, seven for eight from the field. And for Serge Ibaka, he took advantage. You can see now from, from Serge Ibaka being in attack mode, that's something that he needed to do. And the previous game before these back-to-back 17-point -back games, he was one for nine, I believe, from the field. So for Serge, he came back with a vengeance. He attacked. He did all the right things. And now he's rolling as they go on this road trip. So 22 minutes today for Serge. And then we saw Evita Zubats with 24 minutes as well. Just trying to share the love that way. Yes. As he gets another double-double today. And you see that he's really committed to, you know, I'm not in here necessarily to score. If it happens, great. But I'm ferocious on the glass. Well, for, for Evita to... to to know your role as a player, and he's one of the other bigs, and if you look at this team in OKC, he had a size advantage. So he took advantage of that, and it's not just from the scoring standpoint. Avisa continues to run up and down the court to get those rebounds, offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds, and to be more efficient. If you look at his stat, five for six for, from the field. So that means that Avisa was definitely attacking the basket. He was patient, he got to the glass, and he kept that field goal percentage up. You have fouls on your box score there for for Visa. Yes, I, I'm do. curious, right? Because this is what we all, we watched for. Can you two. do two? Two. He's aggressive and he's not fouling. It's lovely to watch him grow, isn't it? Just like it's a call off the bench, steps in. You need a three, you got it. Need another one? Here you go. He had it going on the minute they gave him the nod, which, by the way, Patrick Beverly had a sore right knee, so that's why he didn't show up in the second half. Well, you needed someone to come in to fill that void. Reggie, 10 points in that third quarter, finished with 14 points in the entire game. And that's what with what we've seen from Reggie is when he's calling from the earlier that it was a play that Kawhi Leonard got the basketball to Reggie to make that three from that right wing, right corner, I, be, I believe. But that's important. You, you want to have your... Your, your second line of defense, so your second unit, come in and make plays to help your first unit. All right, I want you to give a score, a grade on the defense today. I mean, specifically, we know we gotta that. We got to see something. We got to see it. Well, we will oh, yeah, let you look at the paper before you give the score, <laughs> Professor Maggetti. Ty Lue came into this one. I was like, uh-uh, no way Shea Gilgis Alexander is going to school us again like he did on a Friday night. So I'm curious about the defensive adjustments, sir. You have to adapt. Okay. And if we can look at this nice. Please give this man some video. Look at it. <laughs> Team defense, it was, you know, you had individual defense, but they wanted to help the helper. And when you had your two bigs that were out on the island against Shea Gildas Alexander because he's so talented, they, they had their players in the right position. Patrick Beverly was in the right position. Paul George was in the right position. Kawhi Leonard. So overall, man, I just love that they understand how to have their rotations on the defensive end and help, their, help each other out.
Listening to Reggie Jackson post game, I thought it was interesting because he talked about continuity, mm -hmm. and he also said we want to be known as a defensive team. And I think we all talked about the Clippers in that kind of conversation coming into the season, but uh, we've been we've been distracted by the magnificent offense. So you think defense is really going to be more of the commitment, especially they're headed east for a six game roadie. Well, if you look at their three better players from a defensive standpoint, Kawhi, PG and Patrick Beverly, they're, they're already committed to the defensive end. Now it's trying to get everyone else involved. And by bringing in a Serge Ibaka, now you have a line of defense that you would get more shot blocking. But you need to have players buy in. Nicholas Batum, a glue guy, came in, he's buying in. When you talk about continuity, it's about everyone putting their egos at the door and allowing them to work together for the betterment of this team. Concerted effort to work yes. on this defense as we're going on the road. All right, we're also working hard to get you some sound from Staples Center, and you know what that means.